idea we have been in top 100. This milestone recognizes our hard work, focus, and the dedication. In 2024, Ford cut back production of its F-150 Lightning, the electric truck once hailed as the future. Sales collapsed, not because people stopped believing in EVS, but because the price was out of reach. If you've ever looked at an electric car and wondered why it still feels like a luxury, you're not alone. The secret lies in the battery and in the country that now dominates it. Today, we'll uncover how China captured the heart of the EV and what that means for America's future. So let's dive in and move forward into this untold story. The American Dilemma Ford's Lightning was supposed to be the people's truck, proof that America's best-selling vehicle could survive the leap into the electric age. Instead, it became a warning sign. By 2024, sales slowed, production was cut, and the dream of mass adoption felt fragile. The problem wasn't interest. Americans had grown curious about EVS, drawn to the promise of cleaner power and cutting-edge design. The obstacle was cost. For families weighing their options, the electric version demanded more than the familiar gasoline model. Practicality won out, and the transition faltered. This challenge stretched far beyond Ford. Across the country, automakers faced the same brutal math. The average EV carried a price tag well above what most households could manage. At a moment when climate urgency pressed harder than ever, the market signaled resistance. At the heart of the crisis lay one truth. Nearly half the cost of an electric car sits in its battery. If automakers could master that single piece, they could unlock affordability. Ford sought that solution through a new plant. But the technology it needed was tied to China's CATL, the largest battery maker in the world. A practical fix collided with politics, leaving a nation caught between ambition and suspicion. The Rise of China's EV Power Two decades earlier, China had seen its future clearly, and it was unsustainable. Oil imports soared, smog smothered its cities, and domestic car makers lagged far behind. The government made a gamble leapfrog the combustion engine and embrace electricity. The Ministry of Science and Technology coined the phrase new energy vehicles. It was more than branding. It was a national mission. Subsidies flowed, land was offered at low cost, and loans came easily. From 2009 to 2022, nearly $29 billion fueled the industry's growth. Automakers that might have failed elsewhere found themselves protected at home. Change arrived quickly on the streets. Local governments electrified buses and taxis, creating visible symbols of progress. Shenzhen's entire fleet of 16,000 buses went electric under BYD, a company destined to become a global giant. Consumers were drawn Reduced in its with irresistible in incentives. Twice, BYD Discounts increased its prices. Cheaper charging, direct competitors. preferential BYD parking, is so much ahead of Tesla and even in China, special license like a, plates it's marking just, them it's as pioneers. Ridiculous. If you count all the manufacturing the space they have in China to make cars, trend. it would amount to a big the percentage of all the land in Manhattan. Island. Electric vehicles in China one of shifted BYD's from curiosity more than 5, to mainstream. In mainland China. By creating not just subsidies, but a culture around EVS, the government turned a policy experiment into an industrial revolution. The battery standards and protectionism. China's EV revolution was not smooth. Early models struggled with weak batteries, short ranges, and limited appeal. Instead of retreating, Beijing raised the bar. Automakers could only access subsidies if their batteries met strict density standards. Failure meant extinction. Success meant survival. Then came the decisive stroke. Foreign automakers like Tesla and GM were welcome in China, but only if they partnered with local suppliers. If their vehicles used foreign-made batteries, they would not qualify for subsidies. 
The rule forced cooperation, ensuring Chinese battery companies had guaranteed markets and rapid growth. By 2022, subsidies ended, but the habit was deeply formed. The infrastructure was ready, the public was engaged, and the industry no longer needed state support to thrive. In 2024, China reached a milestone. Over half of all new cars sold were electric. It wasn't just a number. It was proof that for millions, the electric car was no longer a risk. It was the default choice. Control of the supply chain. Every battery begins with raw materials, lithium, cobalt, nickel, manganese, and graphite. Each is essential, each scarce, each subject to global competition. Chinese companies recognized early that controlling these resources meant controlling the industry. They moved into mines across Africa, South America, and beyond, securing long-term stakes in the ground itself. But mining was only the first move. The true advantage came in refining. Turning ore into usable material is expensive and polluting. Many countries avoided it. China embraced it. Today, most of the world's key battery minerals pass through Chinese refineries, no matter where they are mined. From refining, the chain extended to manufacturing. Chinese factories mastered the delicate work of producing cathodes, anodes, electrolytes, and separators, then assembling them into cells. Experience gained in consumer electronics translated seamlessly into automotive batteries. Companies like BYD, once battery suppliers for phones, shifted upward into cars. Japan and Korea had once led in lithium-ion technology. By the 2020s, China had surpassed them both. What began as a national project to cut pollution and oil imports had evolved into full-spectrum dominance of the most important component in the future of transportation. America's Handicaps the United States entered this race late. It had perfected engines, but batteries were left to others. When EVS surged, America found itself dependent on foreign supply chains. New tax credit rules under the Biden administration highlighted the weakness. To qualify, vehicles needed batteries with limited Chinese content. Overnight, only a fraction of models met the bar. The policy revealed the gap between America's goals and its capabilities. Ford tried to bridge that gap with a deal. Partner with CATL to build a battery plant in Michigan. On paper, it offered affordability, jobs, and momentum. In reality, it opened a storm. Critics warned of over-reliance on Chinese technology. Lawmakers launched investigations. What should have been progress became another chapter in the U.S.-China standoff. American automakers found themselves paralyzed. The urgency of climate change demanded speed. Politics demanded caution. And as decisions stalled, China's lead only deepened. The U.S. was chasing a moving target, one it had allowed to slip far ahead. Innovation in China Batteries once depended on expensive and controversial minerals, nickel and cobalt. Most saw this as unavoidable. China saw it as an opportunity. The solution was lithium iron phosphate, or LFP. Safer, cheaper, and more abundant, it sacrificed range at first. But relentless innovation reshaped it. By 2023, CATL unveiled an LFP battery capable of 370 miles of driving after just 10 minutes of charging. BYD followed with its blade battery, thin, elongated cells designed to fit more energy into the same space. The design improved efficiency, safety, and affordability. What once looked like a compromise became a breakthrough. These advances reshaped the global market. LFP batteries, once dismissed, surged in popularity. Nearly all were produced in China. But China's ambition didn't stop at home. 
New plants in Germany and Hungary signaled a push into Europe. Innovation was no longer about catching up. China was now setting the pace. Its companies weren't just dominating supply, they were redefining the technology itself. The unavoidable choice. America's path forward now faces a stark truth. Chinese batteries are embedded in the global EV market. They cannot be easily replaced. Ford's Michigan plant stands as a symbol. If completed, it could anchor affordable EV production on U.S. soil. Yet suspicion clouds the effort. Lawmakers question whether reliance on Chinese designs undermines national security. Communities argue over benefits versus risks. The project is suspended between necessity and distrust. Meanwhile, the clock moves forward. Climate goals demand faster adoption, but alternatives remain years away. Automakers must decide, work with China to keep prices down, or wait for a domestic industry that doesn't yet exist. The dilemma is more than economic. It reflects values and priorities. Independence versus urgency. Rivalry versus survival. There is no easy answer, only the weight of compromise. What is clear is that decisions made now will echo far beyond car lots and factories. They will shape the speed of the global transition, the balance of power between nations, and the legacy of this moment in history. The story of the electric vehicle is not only about machines, it is about power, choices, and the unseen costs of progress. China built its dominance not overnight, but through vision, investment, and control of every link in the chain. Now, the world's transition to clean transport runs through its factories. For America, the path is tangled. Every step forward is weighed against caution. Every solution sparks suspicion. And as the debates continue, the planet waits for action. The EV is no longer a luxury or an experiment. It is the future. But whose future it becomes depends on decisions being made today. In boardrooms, in legislatures, in places far removed from the roads we drive. The question is simple. How fast can we change and at what cost? The answer is still unfolding and the time to decide is running out. The story of the electric vehicle is no longer just about cars. It is about power, dependence, and the choices shaping our future. China built an empire around the battery and now the world's transition flows through its hands. For America, the dilemma is stark. Move quickly with help from a rival, or wait and risk falling behind. Each path carries a cost. What hangs in the balance is more than climate goals or market share. It is trust, independence, and the kind of world we will choose to build before time runs out.